guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. So first things first, we have a little bit of a change in background. I kind of went back to my first ever background and then added a few little bits and bobs. I don't know, I just thought it was looking a little dull back there, so we had to brighten things up. Today's tutorial is inspired by Mitchell on Instagram. I will go ahead and leave his links down below. But we're going to be creating a really beautiful black, pink and white halo eyes. So we're going to be going from black to pink to white to pink to black. So I am so excited to show you guys how to achieve this at home. I also have a few new products to try out, which is always exciting. So I really hope that you enjoy this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel before you leave and check out my social media links below. And if you don't know, I also have an Instagram account where I post other tutorials that you won't see here on YouTube, as well as close-up eye shots that you see in a few of my tutorials, and just generally a whole heap of makeup looks. So you should definitely go check that out. The link is below. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get started with this tutorial. Tutorial. Okay, the hair is back. I will never understand how people apply their makeup with their hair out, like looking glamorous. For me, it is a slick ponytail, otherwise my hair gets in my foundation, my mouth, my eyes, and it is just a mess. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the base. So you guys know that I love the Urban Decay Self-Adjusting Complexion Primer. This blows my skin like nothing else that I own. And I love to take it on the Sigma 3D HD Max Kabuki brush. I love the shape of it and it's just so big so it gets the job done nice and quickly. So I'm actually going to go in with another primer, and this isn't really that necessary, but I'll explain why I'm doing it in a sec. So I'm going to take the Makeup Forever Step 1 Radiant Primer, and this is used to brighten the skin as it does have a purple tinge to it. I don't find that it overly brightens my skin, but I do find it creates a nice cooling sensation. And my skin's feeling a little bit hot right now, my ears feeling a little bit hot, which if you know the saying, it means someone's talking about you, so... Hopefully it's in a good way, but yeah, my skin's feeling a little bit hot right now, so I just want to use this primer to kind of cool it down. And I'm just taking that on the same Sigma brush. Let's move on to foundation. So I'm going to take the Estee Lauder Double Wear in Desert Beige, and I'm going to mix in a few drops of the Marc Jacobs Do You Do Drops to give my skin a nice glow to it. And I love this foundation. It's very much a your skin but better foundation. And I'm going to use the Morphe Y6 brush to buff that into my skin. I just love how this foundation looks on my skin. Like, it's flawless. To conceal and brighten down the center of my face, I'm going to use the Essence Camouflage Full Coverage Concealer. This is such a great drugstore affordable concealer. I love it, and I'm going to blend that out with a dampened beauty blender. And this concealer is in the shade 05 Ivory. So I'm going to go ahead and take some translucent powder and use that to set those areas that we applied the concealer. And I'm using translucent powder rather than a pressed powder that has coverage to avoid those areas becoming heavy and cakey. And I'm using the Morphe Y11 brush to do this. I'm then going to use the L'Oreal 24 hour powder foundation in beige to set the rest of my face. And I'm going to do this using the Morphe Y1 brush. And this will also just add that little bit extra coverage to the rest of my face. Okay, let's add a little bit of definition to the face. And you guys know that I love to use the Hula Bronzer by Benefit to sculpt out my cheekbones. So I have a new bronzer to try out, which is very exciting. So this is the Anastasia Powder Bronzer in Rosewood. And when I hear Rosewood, I think of Pretty Little Liars, which I've only just finished, by the way. Like, what? It's been out for like a year now, and I've only just finished it. Don't worry, I won't give spoilers, but I don't know how I feel about the ending. I'm still on the fence about it. <laughs> but anyway, back to the bronzer. The packaging is so luxurious, so I'm so excited to give this a go. Ooh. Okay. It's a lot more pigmented than I expected. Okay, so I really love that bronzer. I think it is looking beautiful. So now it is time to move on to blush. So I'm going to take the Astralis Cosmetics Powder Blush in Dreamy. And this is a nice nude pink shade. And I'm going to take this on the Morphe Y3 brush and apply it to the apples of my cheeks and bring it back towards my temples. And now I have a new highlighting palette to try out. Well, new to me at least. This is the BH Cosmetics Black Light Highlight. Wow, you wouldn't want to say that like 50 times fast. 
black light highlight and this looks like such a fun palette and I'm gonna be taking these two shades here so this is strobe and Electra I'm gonna be mixing these two and applying it to the high points of my face whoa <gasps> that is blinding okay we need to we need to tone this down a little <laughs> Wow it is crazy how blinding this highlighter is and it's so affordable like what well that was a lot more pigmented than I was expecting which is a good thing because I am like glowing right now so let's go ahead and set this into place to ensure it's gonna last throughout the day so I'm gonna take the dry cosmetics slay all day setting spray in watermelon so that is the face done I'm now gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer and we'll do our brows together and then we can move on to the eyes so for my brow I'm gonna start by taking the benefit precisely at my brow in number four and I'm gonna use the spoolie to brush through my brow hairs and then I'm gonna use the pencil to create a line under my brow to kind of create the shape of my new brow I'm then gonna create a line above the brow hairs to continue creating the shape of the brow and then I'm gonna join the two lines together at the end of my brow to create a nice shape sharp precise point and then filling in the brow and I'm using hairlight strokes at the beginning of my brow to again help create a more natural look so I know this looks a little bit crazy right now but I just really want to leave this brow bare so that you can really see like the before and after of the brow transformation so I'm now gonna take the Chi Chi brow pomade in medium brown on the Sigma small angled brush and I'm gonna do the exact same steps and using this brow pomade is really gonna ensure that the brow is gonna stay there throughout the day and it's just gonna really intensify and darken everything that I've just done I then take a synthetic brush with some concealer to clean up any mistakes and just to really sharpen and define this brow. I'm now going to take the L'Oreal Brow Artist Plumper in medium dark and this is going to tint the brow hairs to make them look fuller. And I like to brush the beginning of my brow upwards to make my brow look more natural and bushier. Okay, two more steps, we're almost there. So I'm now gonna take the Benefit 3D Brow Tones in number four, and I've been really enjoying this lately. So I apply this to the beginning of my brow just to lighten it and make my brow look a little bit more warm toned rather than completely cool toned. So the last step is to set the brow into place to ensure that no hairs move throughout the day. So for this, I use the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. Okay, can we take a second to appreciate this brow transformation? Like, brows are literally everything. They make the biggest difference. And I know this brow right now looks very harsh, but it's just in contrast with the this, whatever this is, the no brow situation. And I know this brow, of course, isn't for everyone. Brows are very personal, so just do whatever is your personal brow preference. So I'm now gonna go ahead and do this one here, and then we can move on to the eyes. Okay, so for the eyes, I am actually gonna switch to a voiceover, just because I think once I start, you guys will realize there are quite a few steps to this look, and I think if I like stop and talk and start again, things will get a little bit confusing. So I am gonna switch to a voiceover, but I just quickly wanna say that you guys know that I love the Morphe 35B palette, but I was like, surely there must be an even more pigmented, buttery, blendable formula out there with bright colors, and I think I have found it. So today I'm going to be using all Sugar Peel Cosmetics shadows, and I've known about this brand for a while now, but just for some reason I had never tried the eyeshadows. But now that I've tried them, I'm obsessed. I cannot stop using them. Oh, they're just like so pigmented. So I'm so excited to use them in a tutorial today. And yeah, I hope that you enjoy the eye look. So I'm taking the shade Dolly Pop on the Morphe E27 brush. And this is going to act as our transition shade. So I'm applying this in my crease. And as I mentioned, we are creating a halo eye style today. So that means I'm going to take this shadow all the way from my outer to inner corner. Now going in with the shade Love Plus on the Zoeva Soft Definer brush, I'm really going to focus this in my crease. And this is going to help with the blending process of the next shadow that we go in with, which is that black. And going back in with the first brush we used to blend that out. 
With that same Zoeva brush, I'm going to take Bulletproof, which is that black shade, and I'm going to start to apply this just below where we applied that red shade. And I'm going in with a really light hand because it is a black, so we don't want to go straight away in with its full pigmentation because that will make the blending process a lot harder, and that's when we start to look like we have a black eye, especially with the red and pink. Not cute. So I'm going to start off by applying this with a really light hand and then gradually build up its intensity. And this is only the base for the black. We are going to go in and really intensify it, but for now we're just applying the base. I'm now going to use concealer to start to shape this halo eye and I'm going to bring the line almost all the way to my inner and outer corner so that I'll have enough lid space to work with. I'm then going to use the Garnier Micellar Water Makeup Remover to remove the excess eyeshadow to create a clean canvas to work with. I'm now going in with the Super Beauty Hydro Liner in Space Panda and this is a water activated product and I'm taking that on a Zoeva Luxe Smoky Shader Brush and applying that all over this lid space. And this is going to act as a base to really intensify the shadows that we are going to apply over the top of this. And I know this is looking a little bit crazy but just bear with me, it will all come together. I'm setting that white with the white eyeshadow. So I'm now going to create a gradient of color. So I'm going to go back in with that Love Plus shade and start to apply it to the very inner and outer corner of that white shade. Then taking Dolly Pop, I'm blending that between the white and red, leaving the center of my lid white. Then with a Zoeva Luxe Precise Shader Brush, I'm going back in with that white shadow and I'm blending between the white and pink. And I also think it's okay if the blender isn't absolutely perfect, so don't stress about that too much. Now going in with the Super Beauty Hydro Liner in the shade Grease on the Zoeva Luxe Precise Shader Brush, I'm intensifying the black on my inner and outer corners. I'm also taking that on the Sigma Winged Liner Brush to define the edge of that halo cup crease. Then going back in with the black shadow, I'm going to use that to blend out the black liner. I'm then just going to go back in and just blend everything again. I just want to ensure there are no harsh lines and everything is nice and seamless. While we're here, let's do the lower lash line. So I'm going back in with more Dolly Pop on the Morphe Y20 brush and I'm smudging that under my lower lash line before going in with the Morphe Y22 brush with more of Bulletproof and smudging that as close to my waterline as possible to create the same smoky look that we have on our lid. I'm lining my waterline with the Marc Jacobs Highliner Matte Gel Eye Crayon in Black Earth. I'm just going to quickly highlight my inner corner with the same highlighter we used on our cheeks before going in with the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. Okay, so let's finish off the look. So I'm going in with the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipstick in Mother. And this goes with the eyes perfectly. I don't usually reach for pinks, but with this look, I love it. And this is the finished look. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.